The president of Regis University, Father John Fitzgibbons, joins us this morning. Father, welcome to our studio, and welcome to Colorado, actually, because mm -hmm. you're relatively new at Regis, coming from Marquette University, but you also served at Gonzaga and the University of San Francisco. Tell us why the election of this Jesuit as the new pope is significant to Regis University and Jesuit higher education. I'm happy to. Thank you. Thank you very much. This is unique. It is truly the first time a Jesuit has ever been elected Holy Father. It's very rare for uh, an order priest, a Benedictine, a Dominican, a Jesuit, to be made a bishop. That's rare. This is unique. It's brand new. We've never seen this before. He is a man, as we have heard, of enormous uh, humility, great humility. He's quiet. He's a scholar. He's very, very talented. And he's a good organizer. He ran an enormously large archdiocese, Buenos Aires, and did it very successfully. Sounds like he has all the qualifications. Were you surprised by that selection? That he I was, was chosen? shocked. Were I was you? absolutely and shocked. And why is that? Well, it's just so unusual for an order priest to be a, a, a bishop. We haven't mm -hmm. had that in a long time. And this is the first time in church history we've had a Jesuit. Pontiff. The right. Jesuits, the order was founded in the 1500s, and the Jesuits really have not sought higher office That's in this right. particular way. So if you're excited, I'm wondering if the whole campus yesterday was excited. We were thrilled. And oh, yeah. one of the things we talked about in my office was as we watched the, uh, the white smoke and as we watched the, uh, the announcement, we all reflected that, in fact, uh, Jesuits take a vow not to be a bishop. And the only person who can... Uh, turn that vow over is the Holy Father himself, which John Paul did with, with uh, our new pontiff. A very exciting time. It seems to be a very happy time for many in the Catholic Church. But there are also a lot of challenges he's going to face now as the leader. Talk about that. I would love to. I, I think there, there are really two areas that I would focus on. One is there's the internal working of the church, uh, the papal curia, so his cabinet, as it were. That probably needs some real attention, and uh, I don't want to tell the, His Holiness what he should do, but, <laughs> but it, it's clear uh, to the whole world that that probably needs a little attention from him and, and some, some real encouragement and, and streamlining. The second area is that we all hope that people who are disaffected, uh, people who are a bit marginalized and hurt in the church, the victims of clergy sexual abuse, women in the church, people who are gay and lesbian, transsexual, bisexual, they really need to be heard and listened to. So there's, there's, a, there's a bit of pastoral care that really needs to take place, and we look to him to do that. A heavy load, yeah. What do you know about him, and we don't have a lot of time, sure. Father, that makes you think he'll be successful in facing those challenges and turning things around? Two qualities. He's a great pastor, and that's really what the church needs now. You saw it in the opening moments. He, he listened first. He didn't make any gestures. He really looked and listened. And the first thing he said was, I wanted you to pray for me before I begin to pray for you. Very telling. Uh, I think, I think um, uh, that's a moment. That the very choice of his name, Francis, uh, indicating both uh, the humility and simplicity of Francis of Assisi and Francis Xavier, the, the great patron of the missions and a Jesuit. Yeah, it was very telling yesterday the way he started everything off. All right. Thank you, sir. We appreciate you coming in. Father John Fitzgibbons, president of Regis University, the only Jesuit Catholic university in the Rocky Mountain region. Thank you.